Findus Goes Camping. This is a good story about Findus, old man, fin, old man Pets and his little cat Findus, who always have all kinds of adventures. And this episode, as you can see, they the hens kind of get in their way as they're trying to go camping. And then Petson, well, you'll see. Hmm, what if there's going to be some fishing in this story? Old Petson was up in the attic one day looking for a bag of fishing floats. I know it was here someplace, he said. Findus the cat was trying to help. He'd found a green sausage, a big green cloth sausage, and was balancing on it. As he walked forward, it rolled backwards. As he walked backwards, it rolled forward. The faster he walked, the faster it rolled. Look, Petson, he yelled. Petson looked up from his box. Well, look at that. Watch that you don't roll down the... Help! The sausage flumped down the steep staircase, and the cat thudded after. Petson hurried down. Findus, are you all right? Did you hurt yourself? Yes, the cat whimpered. I think I broke my ears. Why have you got such dangerous sausages lying around in the attic? He scolded. It's a tent, said Petson. A tent? What do you mean, a tent? What is a tent, said Findus. A house of canvas you can sleep in when you're out hiking in the mountains, for instance. The cat looked at him as if he was loony. You mean you're supposed to sleep in this thing when you're hiking? Are you meant to walk in your sleep with a sausage on your head? No, oh, no, said Petson patiently. There's a tent rolled up in the bag. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Petson pulled out the tent and unfolded it. Its smell brought back vivid memories, even though it was so long since he'd been camping. They'd had such fun when he was young. Why not go camping again? It would be a good chance to try out his new invention. Hmm. Findus found the tent opening and crept in. I want to sleep in here, he said. Let's go hiking in the mountains. What are the mountains? They're really big hills, said Petson. There's a really big hill behind the tool shed. We can hike there, said Findus. That's hardly a hike. It's more like a 15-minute stroll, sniffed the old man. But Petson, it doesn't have to be so far. We can hike a teeny bit and then sleep in the tent. But I'd like to try out my new invention, said Petson. What about a longer trip around the lake? We can camp halfway and go fishing, and then we can sit on the shore at sunset and grill perch over an open fire. Yes, let's. Come on, then, said Findus, and as he bounded about. Hang on in the pack first. Tent, sleeping bag, thermos, the invention that wasn't quite ready yet. It took ages to think of and find everything he needed. The cat waited impatiently. They set off together at last with the cat leading the way. When they passed the hens, Findus called, Cheerio, chickens! We're going to camp and hike in the mountains and fish in the lake, and you can't come. Oh, why can't we come? Petson, we want to camp in the lake, too, cackled the hens, and started to cluck after them. Okay. No, it's quite impossible, said Petson. It's too far. You'd just get lost in the forest, and then the fox would come and eat you up. You're staying here. We want to come, too, squawked the hens. Petson started to run, but the hens chased after him. Old Betty Anderson was in the beet field and saw Petson running away from the hens. Don't be afraid, Petson, she shouted. They're just chickens, not so dangerous. Petson stopped. This was too silly. He had to make the hens go home. He turned back and the hens followed cautiously. He went over to the chicken run and called, Nice little chickens, cluck, cluck, time for bed now, come along. Findus ran around trying to shoo them in without success, of course. He thinks we're stupid. It's broad daylight. If you're camping at the lake, pets, and then we're coming with you. If you stay here, we'll stay here, too. They had made their minds up, so that was that. You just can't argue with ten hens. We'll have to we'll have to go hiking some other time, Findus, Bed said Pets, and let's at least you won't have to walk so far now. Findus was disappointed. He leaped about yelling at the hens, but everyone cheered up again when Petson said they could pitch the tent in the garden instead. The cat helped the hens. The cat helped, and the hens watched, and soon the tent was ready. Petson rolled out the sleeping bag and Findus nestled down. He looked pleased. This house is perfect for me. I'm sleeping here tonight. We want to sleep here too, chorused the hens. No, but you can't, shrieked Findus. They can't, can they, Petson? It'll be fine, said the old man. Findus, you come help me for a moment. Out of earshot of the hens, Petson whispered, leave them be. They'll soon get bored. Meanwhile, we can go fishing. It's time to try my new invention. 
Petson had invented a fishing bow. Down by the lake, he explained to Findus how it worked. The hook and the float were attached to an arrow. The arrow was attached to some fishing line. The rest of the line was wound on a reel that was attached to a bow. With the bow, he could shoot the hook and the arrow far out over the water, much farther than he could cast with a fishing rod. It worked really well. Petson aimed for a clump of reeds further out. He was sure there were some big pike out there. For a long time, nothing happened, except that Findus caught lots of perch standing on his stone and fishing the usual way. Then Petson took the littlest perch and put on his hook and shot it off. Scarcely had the arrow touched the water when there was an almighty splash. It was the almighty splashing of an almighty fish. Look, Findus, Petson squeaked. Do you see that? What a pike. It was big as a seal. It struck again. Petson held on to his bow for dear life. Then the line snapped and vanished with the pike down into the depths of the lake. The old man and the cat watched quietly as the ripples subsided and the lake grew still again. Oh my, whispered Petson. I've never seen such a big one before. Let's go home now, said Findus, tugging him hard by the hand. Come on, Petson, we've caught enough fish for now. Going back, Petson want, Findus wanted to know all about how big the dangerous pike could be. But Petson was very quiet and thoughtful and hardly answered. While the lake was still in view, he kept turning to look back at the reeds, but everything stayed calm. Sure enough, when they got back, they found the hens had grown bored with tents. Only May Rose was left laying hens in the sleeping bag. Petson lit a fire on the gravel path and made coffee on it. Then they grilled the perch over the embers and pretended they were in the mountains. Petson leaned back against the apple tree and let out a deep sigh. Ah, yes. Nothing beats grilled perch and a cup of coffee after a long day's hiking over the mountaintops. At least I think so. You mean you don't know so? Asked Findus. Nope, I've never been to the mountains. Never got round to it. We didn't have time for that sort of thing and couldn't afford it either, but it would have been nice. The moment it started getting dark, Findus wanted to go to bed, even though it was still quite early. He wanted to sleep in the tent and couldn't wait any longer. Petson said goodnight, shut the hens in, and went indoors to listen to the weather forecast. Findus lay alone in the tent. It was exciting to lie in a tent. In a tent, light is different, and so is the dark. It was almost dark now. Sound was different, too. He heard faint rustlings from the trees, almost as clearly as if he were outside, but different. At once clearer and more muffled. In fact, he could hear every little snap and whisper. But because he couldn't see anything, he tried twice as hard to work out what each noise was. No matter how hard he looked, he couldn't see. All he could see was the wall of the tent. No matter how hard he listened, he couldn't be sure what he was hearing. Come to think of it, he didn't know what an almighty pike might sound like. Suddenly camping on his own was a bit too exciting. He wriggled out of the sleeping bag, peeked through the tent entrance, then scampered fast as he could to the kitchen to Petson. The old man was just going to bed when the cat came racing in. What's up, said Petson, no fun in the tent? Oh yes, yeah, said Findus, it was fun for quite a while, but then it got so lonely. I, I think it would be more fun if there's two of you. You don't say, said Petson. I think you were scared of the dark. Did you, you, you see well in the dark? You see so well in the dark after all. Oh, I didn't think you were scared of the dark. You see so dark, dark, well in the dark after all. Yes, yes, you always say that, but I, I hear really well too, said Findus. And the thing is that when you're alone in a tent, all you see is the tent, but you hear an awful lot more. So I thought that if you sat with me for a while, I wouldn't hear so much, and then camping would be much more fun. You might be right, muttered Petson. I suppose we could go and try. They went out to the tent again. It was almost pitch dark now. Findus crept into the sleeping bag, and Petson sat beside him. But it was a small tent, and sitting up was uncomfortable, so after a while, Petson lay down in the sleeping bag and put Findus in his hat instead. They lay there in silence for a while. Actually, it's lucky you didn't catch that pike. It probably would have eaten us up. I don't think I want to come with you next time you go fishing. Oh, no need to worry. I've never seen anything that big before, so I doubt we'll ever see it again, said Petson. Now go to sleep. And with that, Petson himself went to sleep. And before Findus realized he was alone again, and before Findus realized he was alone again, he went to sleep as well. Findus woke early next morning before it was quite light. He was cold and thirsty. He ran into the house and drank some milk. Then he went into Pitson's bedroom and had a good bounce on the bed for a bit. The old man didn't like to see him doing this, but now he couldn't see him. Then it was so warm and cozy under the blankets that he lay there for a while, just a little while before going back out to the tent again. 
But then again, why go out to the tent when he could just as well stay here and be cozy? Findus was woken by the world's biggest pikefish knocking on the door. Wide-eyed, he leapt up and listened. The kitchen door opened and the pike came in, calling, Hello, Petson, are you up? It was Gustafson, the neighbor. Findus kept quiet. He didn't like Gustafson. He hopped out the window and ran out to the tent to wake Petson. Before the old man could wake up properly, Pet Gustafson was peering into the tent. Hello there, Petson. It's eight o'clock. Rise and shine. Petson grunted and began awkwardly to crawl out of the tent. So you're out camping, said Gustafson. On, a ho on holiday, are we? Petson was a little embarrassed because he'd been caught sleeping in a tent in his own garden. People don't usually camp in their own garden. No, not exactly, he mumbled. He didn't know what to say. It's not me. It's, it's Findus. Oh, so it's Vindus, is it? Said Gustafson, stroking his chin. But it looks like you. Same hat, anyway. The smirk on Gustafson's face told Petson that the whole neighborhood would soon know about silly old Petson camping in his own garden. Then Petson lost his temper. Obviously, you need something new to tell the neighbors, he said. So I'll tell you all about it. We've been hiking out in the mountains the past few days, Findus and me. We were chased by a pack of wolves and then got lost. We ended up at a huge lake and went fishing. I caught a deep sea monster with my bow and arrow and threw it back. Findus caught some salmon, and we came home and uh, and ate them, and I got so full I dozed off, and the next thing I knew I was lying in a tent. It must have been Findus who put the tent up over me while I was sleeping. Isn't that right, Findus? The cat nodded. See, that's what happened, said Petson. I hope you don't mind me taking a nap in my own garden. Uh, no, 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 not, not, not at all, said Gustafson. He looked flabbergasted. He didn't quite know what to think. I only wanted to borrow a spanner, he said. <clears throat> they went to the tool shed. Gustafson got his spanner and left for home still deep in thought. You can borrow the tent as well, said Petson, calling after him. If you feel like a family holiday, take the cows along too. They could use a change of scene. Gustafson said nothing. Why'd you tell him all that whole pack of lies, said Findus. Well, if he wants to go around gossiping, he may as well have a good story to tell. Camping in the garden isn't really much to talk about. You know, Petson, said Findus, we forgot to go hiking in the mountains. So we did. We'll just have to go now instead. We can climb the hill behind the tool shed and eat breakfast. Yes, said Petson. Yes, come on, Petson, let's go. So they did. And that's the end of that one. Thanks for listening.